Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is another product review video, and this is the Profiler 235cc CNC ported head. And I'm going to be talking about it today. I'll give you flow numbers, I'll give you all measurements. But it's the last one of the common or most popular CNC ported heads in this size range. So you can go back and watch the first video I did about this price, this size range was a Rodex 233 CNC ported, and then I did an AFR 235 CNC ported. Then uh, the I think on Sunday or maybe Saturday or Monday I can't remember when I put out stuff anymore. I did the Trick Flow 230 CC head, and that's full CNC ported. This is the last one of the major brands CNC ported head 235 CCs, and I'll show you how that compares to them in just a minute. But let's talk about the head. First off, it has two 125 intake valve and a 1600 exhaust valve. That's the same as both the Brodix and AFR. So, but what's different about this, they claim this is standard valve spacing. I will show you in a second it's not, and this will explain why several of you have a problem with your rocker arm alignment. Um, but we'll get to that in just a minute because I'm going to show you some measurement things. Anyway, it's uh, 2125, 1600. It's truly not a standard valve spacing, but eh, you'll see. Uh, the chambers themselves, these are 68 cc's, they're CNC ported. This head was shipped by a customer, so I would probably never order this head because uh, people typically don't buy this head. They'll get an AFR um, because one, this one ends up being more expensive. So this is about $3,100 bare. And then once you put the valve train in, you're like 3,700. So that's about $200 higher than an AFR. So it's it's not as popular to sell. So if it had been for a, a viewer watching this, I you probably wouldn't be seeing this. And he actually has a flow bench too and unfloated as well. So our numbers are pretty close. So anyway, if it had been for that, you wouldn't see it. But if I just doing my normal basic things, there's some things I like and don't like right away. Um, as you could tell, the valve job's not horrible, but there is a ledge here. Now, it's small. Let me just move my light so I can get you a better view of it. Uh, maybe. There we go. You can see it's just starting right here. It's not so bad. It's not really hurting flow that much till about here because that's when it's starting to make the turn. This is just going straight up into it, so it's a nice transition. Not really have a ledge, but then there's a ledge. And then it's kind of gone here. Now, on the exhaust side... Well, you get a better view of it. You could definitely tell it's it's more pronounced, but the area is going this way, so it's not as bad. Um, these have 11 32nd stems, so difference between that and the AFR. The AFR is eight millimeter stuff, but all everybody else is the trick flows and stuff for 11 32nd too. That's the most common. Obviously, it's CNC ported. Just judging by the CNC porting, it is hand blended. That's why you see these um, cartridge roll lines here. Brodix is the same thing with theirs. You can see the transition line for the CNC porting right there. And that would make it also up at the top, which is about the apex of the short side. And if I fill in there, it's on the back side of it. So it's not quite at the apex. It's right before the apex. And there's actually two lines that you could see. You'll be able to see that one and that one. Those both translate over here and they're slightly before the short side. So that might hurt flow just a little bit. As you could tell, um, the CNC porting breaks through on the head bolts. So they put this head bolt sleeve. That's what I do on all my ported stuff. Not a big deal at all. Just letting you know that's what that is. Let's get to some measurements real quick, though. So one of the, on all the heads, I do this. And I heard you can't see this. Here, maybe I got close enough. Now you can. I measure the bowl, throat, bowl, short side. And then usually I do the push rods next. But these are head bolt. That's most for me and short side to deck. So we'll start off with the throat. I measured this like four times just to make sure I wasn't doing it wrong. It's, there we go, 92.7%. It's big. And if you watch what not to do porting is making the throat too large, you're like, well, they should know what they're doing. Are you sure? Maybe you're just an idiot. Maybe I am. But what I can tell you is when you make the throat too large, it removes part of the angles right here at the valve job. And it hurts the uh, low lift flow because there's not enough angles to make the turn. Of course, the high lift flow, it actually picks it up. So 92.7% is not the end of the world, but typically you'll do it on a 50 degree valve job, not a 45, which is what these have, or even a 52 or 55, you can get away with that because you're moving the angles steeper. So it's 
it's not necessarily like it's the end of the world um, to have that, but on a 45 degree valve job, it's pretty rare because you're removing so many of the angles. It really helps peak flow. It really hurts the low lift flow, which you'll see in a sec. The bowl measured 100.5%, in case you're wondering what that is. That's if you were to draw a line across the guide here at the center, all the way across on each side. That's 105%, that's not bad. The area over the short side, which I'll flip up in a second and show you is 2.84. This one's probably the most important, which is the minimum cross section right here. This is at the push rod pinch, which I'll show you in a second as well. It measures 2.57. And I'm gonna show you how all of these compare with the different heads in just a minute. But let me flip the head over so I can show you what I'm talking about, the short side area and the pinch area. Plus I'll show you something else. Okay, this is the better view to show you some of the other stuff. Um, which the camera's kind of doing this wrong, or not focusing as well. But you'll be able to see the transition line, hopefully right there. You can see that's one of them, and it's before the apex. And then that's a CNC transition line right there. And you see that one right there, there, and there. So they're not quite at the apex, but each one of those transitions, where that's where the tooling comes this way and stops. Then it comes another way and stops and turns and comes another way and stops. Usually most things only have two, but this one has three. Each time they do, if the line at tooling paths don't perfectly line up, you'll get that little spot there. And those happen to coincide over the peak of the short side usually. And that affects flow because that's like the most critical part of the port is right over that short side. You mess that up, you'll lose a couple CFM for sure. Um, just having that ridge there. So I don't know if it's hurting it that bad because it doesn't feel that bad, but it is probably, if you were to take some emery cloth and smooth this out, you'd probably gain a few CFM. Anyway, the, uh, this one right here, this area over the short side is right here. So I measured at the peak of the short side. So if you take it right here and you go straight, straight across and then you go up to down, that's your area. And then this one, the next one was the area, the push rod pinch, which is your minimum cross section area. And that's right here. Now that's where I want to talk about this. Their dividers are super, super thin. So as you can tell, that's it. That measures about 95 thousandths. And this is one of the things, and I've said this before, trick flows were thin, but this, these ones are even thinner. And I know some are like, I can get a gasket to stay. Maybe, I mean, I just try to eliminate as many problems as possible. So I get why they have it thinner, because when you have it thinner, you move this wall over so you can get more air at the, at the push rod. But it really makes things look good on the flow bench, but their gasket still has to seal. And don't forget, if you're doing this right, your intake manifold needs to match that thin. So you better be talented with your hand to not make sure any bumps go across because you you'll mess it up. The gasket itself has 90,000 to steal. And I know you're thinking, there's plenty of other places in the engine where you have a gasket that is thinner and it seals just fine. You are correct. But do they have two opposing um, pressure waves? So like you have one here and here and it's trying to move this. I don't know, uh, that's, I'm not saying it won't seal. I don't wanna get that idea, but it gives a better chance to not seal. Now what you can do, cause no matter what gasket you get, there's no gasket that you can just put on this and just be fine to go. You're gonna have to trim whatever gasket you get. And these are like about a 1206. So you're gonna have to trim that. And I'm just letting you know out of the box. Otherwise what you did is you put on an intake manifold or a gasket and you just put a cork in it. You just eliminate whatever they did. But I'm a huge fan, of it, especially on Boost, because uh, Felpro makes a 1206-3 or S3, and that's got a steel core in it and prevents it from walking away this way. But then it means that it's even harder for you to trim into that. So if I was you're running Boost, I would say get a 1206-S-3 steel core, and then trim that down and get that to seal. Hopefully, you can get it to glue in where it wasn't try to flex in either way. I would recommend that. I'm not a fan of having it in this thin. I'm not saying they won't seal, but I just try to eliminate as much problems as possible. I would rather have done something different, like maybe drop the floor down more or raise the roof and just shift the whole thing up. I don't know, something. Um, usually on my stuff, in case you're wondering what I do, is I actually, on my ported stuff, I'll have them wider here, but then it'll neck down. Because if you look, the port's actually doing this anyway. So if I have it wider here, as the air is coming this way, it's actually making, has the same cross section from here to here, but I'm a little bit wider out through here, so it gives more room for the gasket to seal, and then it gets in there. That's what I do, just because I, I prefer the gasket to seal. Just me. Anyway, there's that. Here's the other couple of cool, now this is good. 
The profile does great on this. Um, if you notice, there's solid all the way across here. So when you attach a rocker stand to this, and I'm not sure if you actually have to have shaft rockers for this. I think stud mount may work. But if you were to do shaft rockers sitting on a solid pedestal, it's so much better. Also, you see this? What that is, is an old drain back. And that's a huge deal because if you notice, they've got some pretty deep pockets for their spring pads. So instead of having oil just accumulating up here and you lose oil to your pan and you have problems, the drain back is pretty nice. So that is a cool deal. They do, do well with that. Now, let's talk about valve spacing. Well, let me just talk about the exhaust ports real quick. They are a D-port exhaust. They're nice. They look beautiful. D-port, they are raised up. Um, they're raised exhaust ports. So has AFR and all the others that I've mentioned so far. They're all raised up, and this is really nice. These are actually raised up slightly more than the Trick Flow, who also had a D-port. And this D-port from Profiler is actually bigger than the Trick Flow as well. Now, let me talk about the valve spacing. Because one of my biggest complaints about selling profilers, and if you're watching this, you probably already watched the video about me saying how Profiler 195 versus the AFR 195. Well, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. The problem with that video is I did it a year ago before Profiler had a price increase. They raised the prices, and now it's $200 more to just to get an AFR versus a Profiler. So an ASCAST AFR versus a CNC ported AFR, $200 difference. Because of that, I haven't sold a single one since. Um, from the price increase. However, when I sold quite a bit, the number one complaint with profiler heads, number one by far, is rocker arm alignment. And profiler claimed all of their, their standard valve spacing. No, it should, everything should work. Whatever works with standard valve spacing should work. Um, it doesn't. And if you purchased any of them, you know it's kind of a fight. You have to do the adjustable push rod guide plates to get it centered over the valve. It's, it's a bit of more of a tricky thing. And Profiler claim, you know, standard valve spacing. And if you ever try to get a stud girdle on it, you realize, no, there's Profiler has a special one. Well, why do they have a special one? Well, maybe the rocker studs in different spots and moves it over so it's centered up better. No, I mean, yeah, that's part of it. Don't get me wrong. But their rocker arm stuff is different, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So give me just a second, and I'm going to show you a drawing to help you. This is a template I use when I order get some of my Dragon Slayers. So when I order a Brodix Dragon Slayer for me to port, sometimes I haven't moved the valve spacing. But to make sure I got the right one, I have this. This is measurements for, because Dragon Slayers, the Brodix Dragon Slayers are standard valve spacing. And this is an easy way to tell if you've got a 4060 spacing or not, just use some of this stuff. The way you can do it is, this is it, like the small block Chevy setup, hopefully you've seen this, it's like this. No, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. If you measure the distance between the center line on the guide on the exhaust to the center line on the guide on the exhaust on the center two, it should come up to about 2.345. Now, this can vary a few thousandths because of the way the guides are, are um, clearance. In other words, if you had an extra thousandths of guide clearance, it's going to move that center line. At, well, it shouldn't move the center line at all, really. But if you're measuring just because of variations slightly, you'll have maybe, maybe five thousandths. But this is really, really close. The other one you can look at is the measurements from these two on the intake, which gets you about 2.670. These are really, really close. Now, what's the profiler though, right? This is the measurements from the profiler. So first one I did was this one's exhaust. So that how close are these two together? The Brodix is 2.345 apart. This one, the profiler is 2.302. So it's about 45 thousandths, but we'll just say because of 5 thousandths variation, it's 40 thousandths difference. These ones, the profiler is actually closer together. Their exhaust valves right here and here are closer together than a standard valve spacing head. And since it said 40, really that means 20 for this one and 20 for that one got moved over. So 20 thousandths, would you like big deal? Rockers should line up. Mm, there's more. Now let's look at the intake. Intake to intake is 2.670. This one is, uh, it says 2.694. So that's about 24 thousandths, but we'll say 20 thousandths. So really, from standard valve spacing, this one itself still has moved over about 10 thousandths, while that one's moved over about 20 thousandths. Why does it make a difference? Because those 10 thousandths and 20 thousandths going that way, so 10 thousandths off that doesn't really help that much flow, but it sure can mess up your valve train geometry. Um, especially if you have a rocker that's really, really close. The other thing I think is that their push rod slot itself. So to make more room, they moved it out, which then makes you have to move your push rod out, which then makes it not try to line up with that. So 
their valve spacing is slightly different than stock. It's not like the Brodix and AFR. So if you look at, so like I said, this one's only moved 10 thousands off the wall. That's not a huge. 20 thousands this way, it's not huge. The Brodix moves 40 and then they moves this one 60 and the AFR moves 60 and then 40. So this one just 10 and then 20. Still, it's different. In case you're wondering, the trick flow was that right there as well. They truly were standard. In other words, you could have used the same rocker set up on this one as on the trick flow, at least as far as the valve placement, as long as the studs were the same. Because that brings up another thing. The rocker studs aren't always the same for each head. So where they put the rocker studs for each head, as far as Brodix and everybody else, aren't always quite the same. But again, the biggest problem I've had when selling these heads is people complain about the rocker arm alignment. Not about the power. Nope, never that. Rock arm alignment. So, but anyway, keep that in mind. So you didn't watch this whole video to hear me blab, but you wanted to see the flow number. So let me go ahead and get them for you. Ta-da. Here are the flow numbers. This is float on my Sains bench, floated in the exact same manner that I float all the other heads. 4155 bore, no exhaust pipe. The numbers I care most about are four, six, and peak. If look at four, 238. I'll be quite honest with you, that's low. Extremely low, but in all fairness, this is the valve it comes with, which is the PBM one. It has very little back cut, so that's not always helping it, but having that throat as big as it was, that hurts the four number because there's not as much angles for the air to turn out. So it's almost straight, no angles to turn. So that's what's hurting that 400 number. It's gonna pick up here, of course. The 600 number is 310, which is not bad. That's about in line with all the others. And peaks 328, which is really good. It's almost 330 CFM. So not bad there. On the exhaust side, I really would have thought the 400 number would have been higher because of all the heads that I've looked at for exhaust flow that we've talked about on this CC range or this size range, they're in the 180s at least. This one didn't even hit 170. So that's pretty low there. The peak flow was 234, which is pretty good. That's about where the rest are kind of falling in line. But that number, so in other words, this whole part here up until about six is lower than all the rest. And from seven, six on, it's about the same. Maybe a little bit lower, but not horribly lower. Nothing like that. That's a good 10 CFM off everybody else's, the Trick Flow, the AFR, the Brodix. But anyway, so I know you're also wondering about, well, how does this measure though? I mean, hope you guys can see that because you get complaints about that. Here's the measurement differences. So I'm going to go through all of them real quick so you can see. There's our profiler one. Mm -hmm. There's the trick flow. Hopefully nothing stuck to it. There's the Brodix. Of course, one stuck behind it. And there's our AFR. So we'll go through these really, really quick because I'm running it. This video is already long. If you look at the throat on the profiler, 1970, 92%. 1.88 trick flow because it's only using a 208 valve of the four heads. The trick flow has the smallest valve. Um, also has a small throat. Uh, 1.95 for the track and 1.953. So biggest throat goes to profiler bowl 100%, which is a 2.136. Mm, see 2.07, which is 99 because it's the smallest valve. Ooh, a small one from uh, Brodix. And 2.133. Biggest bowl goes to... The profiler, short side, the area over that, 2.84, 2.95. That's even bigger with a smaller valve. Uh, 2.89 and 3.21. Biggest one for short side area is the AFR push rod, which is actually probably the most important thing for RPM. Profiler, 2.57. The trick flow, 2.44. Products, 2.33, the smallest. And 2.66 AFR, biggest one being AFR. So anyway, there's some of your numbers, hopefully that helps you out. I want you to tell you guys, thanks for sending this in for the guy that did it. I appreciate that. Hope you guys got something out of this video. I was probably went a little bit long-winded on this, but I want to give as much detail as possible because someone's going to ask instead of just doing that, i put it in the video. Anyway, and then a real close-up in case you're wondering. Guys, thanks for watching. I'm no Superman, and yes, these heads will make power, and you guys take care.